Digital SAT math is hard, but why? Is it math easier on the computer? These are all questions that 2024 SAT students are having with the Digital SAT Fast approaching. So the question is, why is Digital SAT math harder than the SAT math we're used to in the past? In this video, I'll break down exactly what to expect for the Digital SAT math, how the module to adaptivity work, that's what scares literally everyone, how to study for the Digital SAT math, and we're going to go over some example problems and how to attack. The SAT math section is designed to assess your mathematical skills in a more modern and digital format. Like the paper-based SAT, you're going to be facing a variety of question types, including multiple choice, student-produced responses, and questions with multiple parts. There are 27 questions in each module, and there are two modules in total. The topics for the SAT math are the same as the topics in the paper SAT, so the topics have not changed. There are no new topics. You will see the linear equations once again. But do not think you can no longer use old SAT material to study for the DSAT, because that's simply not the truth. So if you have SAT prep books for 2022, 2021, 2022, you can use those to study for the digital SAT. They are still valid. Same techniques apply. The same tips apply. The same tricks apply. Everything applies the same. So now let's talk about module two. Module two is just like the scary thing that a lot of students are worried about because it is what is cooking students internationally. And now US students will be facing the DSAT for the first time in 2024. So we do not want module two to cook you all too. How does module two work? Well, to put it simply, adaptive, 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 adaptive. Module two on the DSAT. SAT is an adaptive module that goes off of your performance on module one. And this is where students get scared and they start thinking, are you telling me if I do horrible on module one, my module two will be super easy. And if I get a perfect on module one, my module two will give me calculus problems. No, that's not how it works. And some students might think, oh, I'll just get one wrong on purpose on the DSAT math section module one. So that way my module two is easier. That's really not how it works because one wrong won't really make a difference. And you still want to maximize the score on module one. You don't want to get any questions purposely wrong because if you're getting questions on module one wrong you're definitely gonna get questions on module two wrong and there will be time pressure on the module two because these questions are harder so you're going to be faced with a jump from difficulty from like here to here if you do stellar on module one and let's say you do horrible on module one well then you're probably not gonna get a good score anyways because module one is supposed to be relatively easy and if you are struggling with module one then you probably need to study a lot more and that goes into how to study for the digital SAT math section so you are getting a 800. Yes, we're going for the perfect score. Even if you just want a 600, you're going for that perfect. Because even if you don't get a perfect score, you'll get at least a 780. So one of the most common type of questions you'll be facing on DSAT is a geometry question. Geometry questions are becoming much more common, meaning you will see them a lot more because the paper SAT tested on geometry, but not as much. But DSAT, because the digital SAT is, you know, digital and you can work with online tools and online shapes, and things are just much easier in an online format, you will see a lot more geometry questions. And, and if you look at the college board release exams, you're going to be seeing a lot of geometry questions already. So you know what to expect. The second thing you want to do is take a ton of practice exams. And I mean a lot. And now with these practice exams, you want to make sure they are adaptive, meaning you don't want to take the practice exams on just College Board's website because those are pre-printed, pre-made questions. If you get a perfect on module one, your module two will be the same. If you get zero on module one, your module two will still be the same because these are paper digital ST exams on College Board's website. They're not adaptive, which is why I recommend using platforms like LearnQ.ai where you can take real adaptive digital ST mock exams. So let's say you do really good on module one, your module two will change. It will be harder. If you do horrible module one, your module two will change and it will be easier. So you want to take real adaptive practice exams like this. So you're not blindsided when you actually step into module two and you get, you're like, whoa, why are the questions so much harder? So yeah, definitely check out LearnQ. It's linked in the description below. It's highly worth it. Next thing you want to do is you want to speed run math exams, whether this be math uh, plug and play practices, whether this be um, things on Khan Academy, whether this there's be like practice exams or paper, you want to speed run everything and see how fast you can do it while getting hundred percent correct. If you're not getting hundred percent of questions correct, then you want to slow it down. And lastly, I mentioned this already, but look at old practice ST math exams, including the paper ones, because the topics are still the same. The techniques are still the same. The tricks are still the same. So that course or that book or that website you're using for paper ST, you can use that same exact one for the digital. Now let's go into some of the questions you will face on digital ST math. So apart from the traditional multiple choice questions you're used to, you will also face student input responses. You're going to be facing some drag and drop questions as well as multi-part problems. Now I want you to quickly imagine solving 
using a question where you drag elements to match functions with their graphs or inputting the exact value of an unknown into an equation. This digital ST format is very interactive and it will challenge your problem solving skills in new ways. But doing something to drag and drop versus multiple choice isn't much different. It's just the method of inputting your answer is different. But the idea, the techniques, tricks, everything's the same. One of the main things you want to practice is a digital ST calculator because these are online calculators. So yes, you might be really fast with the real calculator in your hand, but are you fast with it when it comes to an online calculator? So make sure you practice that. So let's look at this problem right here. Now you tell me, is this a question from a paper SAT or a DSAT? It's from a DSAT. Yes. And you might think, whoa, this is so easy. Yeah, exactly. Module one is this easy. In fact, I feel like module one questions are easier than the non-cal questions on the paper SAT. So let's solve this. 18 plus K equals 30. What is the value of K? Well, subtract 18 from both sides. You get K equals 12. Was that hard? No. And now we're faced with another question. And is this from paper SAT or DSAT? It's from DSAT as well. Well, probably you saw the title of this video, so you know it's DSAT. But this is a question that you're going to be seeing a lot, especially with area and volume. Multi like shape questions and find the total volume. That's what you're going to be used to. So there's three scoops of ice cream in the signature cone. Each one has a, is a sphere with a radius of four centimeters. So the nearest cubic centimeter was a total volume ice cream served per cone. So I want you to comment down the answer below and then we can go through this together. So hopefully by now you commented. Now all you have to do is you got to find the volume formula for a sphere and you should be given that four thirds pi r cubed. Okay. So now you just got to find the volume of one sphere and then multiply that by three. So if we're given four over three pi r cubed, right? R cubed in this case, since r is four will be 64. So 64 times four divided by three is 85.3333. And now you times that by 3.14. Now that you've times it by 3.14, you got the total volume of a sphere for one sphere. Now you multiply that by three and you get a total of 803.836 as asking for nearest cubic centimeter or whatever. So you'll be picking 804. So 804 is your answer. And that is the correct answer. So if you commented that below, then you should reply to your comment and be like, hey, I got it right. These are just some of the questions you'll be facing on the DSAT. So to check for other questions, you know, you can go on LearnQ, you can do their free practices and you can see what you will be facing in real time. Comment down below what video you want to see next and good luck on your digital SAT math. Math study. Thank you all for watching. Peace.